Hello, welcome or welcome to my channel. My name is Becky and I am here to do a reading manga vlog, reading just by family. Twilight is unparalleled when it comes to going undercover on dangerous missions for the betterment of the world. But when he receives an ultimate assignment to get married and have a kid, he may finally be in over his head. Not one to depend on others, Twilight has his work cut out for him, procuring both a wife and a child for his mission to infiltrate an elite private school. What he doesn't know is that the wife he's chosen is an assassin and the child he has adopted is a telepath. I am a Patreon, a Patreon, pa Patreon of Gavin Reads It All's channel, and he is binging the entire Spy Family manga series that he has that is out in English right now. For me, I know that they have the first ten, and I can pre-order the eleventh one, and that comes out later this year. I'm not sure when exactly. And then they have a light novel and another like behind the scenes extra little collector's edition kind of thing. So as you can see in the footage, yesterday I went out and bought the light novel to do this read along. I was like, I read the first four volumes of Spy Family and I was like, I want to join in on this readathon and he's probably going to spoil all of them. And I don't read any manga whatsoever. I've read Spy Family and I've read the first bind up of the monster manga and that's it. And I've only read the first four. So he's going to be spoiling it. So when he normally does these vlogs, I just watch them and I don't care about the spoilers. But this time I was like, well, now I got to read all of them. And I was wondering, like, I read the first four. Should I go back and reread them? They're manga. They're pretty light and easy to read. But I'm still a pretty slow reader and just busy with kids and distractions and stuff like that. So am I going to have the time to reread them? Or should I just go from where I left off and go from five to ten? And Gavin's like, well, if I were you, I would reread the first four. Yeah, okay, I'll re read them from the beginning. So like halfway through number two, I was like, I regret de this decision. <laughs> what am I doing? I don't know how Gavin binges these giant series like reading all of the Princess Diaries books or all of a collection of the Goosebumps books or just deciding he's gonna binge like three of Sarah J Mass's books. Like hers are huge giant fantasy novels. I don't know if they're YA or adult but they're still like huge fantasy novels. Like that's too much. I couldn't just binge that like in a weekend or something like that. Or going away to the Shire and reading The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit in like four days kind of thing. I don't know how he does it and my husband's always like well that's his job. That's what he does. He's single. He doesn't have kids. And I was like even if we didn't have children, even if this was my job, like I can't read that fast. I know I couldn't do that. So like halfway through volume two and it's not I don't regret it because I love this series and it's hilarious and it's adorable and I'm having a really good time with it. I'm just like oh gosh this is gonna end up taking me like two months instead of two days to binge 10 volumes of this. What am I doing with myself? How did I get myself here? What is happening? I don't know. <laughs> I am not cut out to be the kind of booktuber that you see out there that is binge reading all these different series and booktubers favorites, booktubers worst books, whatever the case may be. I'm not the kind of person who can just read all of this stuff and I think I need to be the booktuber out there that just normalizes 
not reading as many books. There are a couple out there like Olivia or Liv from Stories for Coffee. She doesn't read a ton of books either. I just need to be one of those people who is like, yeah, some of us read slower. Some of us don't read 300 books a year. I read on average five books a month and that's a lot for me. Like any more than that, my brain's going to implode, I think. And I was telling my husband because I do count these on my reading as like books that I've read on my book tracking reading goal on Storygraph. I do count these as books and it's really gonna shoot up my stats. <laughs> Anyways, I am just getting into number three now. So I've read, it's manga so it's like backwards from what we read. So I've read this much, I have this much left and I started them yesterday. I am not gonna sit here and spoil every single one of these books. Gavin's channel he does amazing videos and goes in depth and spoils all of it all the time I assume he's gonna be spoiling these ones I am just gonna give like a quick little like what my thoughts are on these books and I haven't watched the manga but I or the anime but I think me and my husband will maybe watch the first few episodes or whatever together he's read I think the first two of these but he hasn't kept up with them he reads a lot more manga than I do but this is them on the back there this is Lloyd Forger he is Twilight our main character He's the book one character. And then his wife, her name is Yor. She's the assassin, secret assassin. And then his daughter, Anya, who is a telepath. And this is hilarious how he gets this mission. Your mission is to get close to him and probe into any sidious activities. He works for the West and there's like a, a civil, civil war kind of brewing between the East and the West and his job is to like bring peace. And his enemy, his child, goes to this elite school that he has to get a child into that academy infiltrate an elite private school so in order to get close to this this guy that's what his daughter's going for and here's like a colored picture of it so he's the spy she's the assassin she's just kind of like stuck in the middle like reading their minds terrified all the time so he's like okay i have to get a child and he just shows up like knocks on this orphanage's door and it's like you want to foster a kid me and my wife have been trying for so many years but yeah whatever just take whichever one you want i was like it's not a pound like it's just so hilarious this guy's just like whatever take whoever and he's like i need a child that can read and write and like you have to be at least six to get into the school, right? So he's like, I got the perfect girl for you. Creepy little brat weirds me out. This is my chance to get her out of here. And I was just like, this guy is just, I don't know. It's horrible, but hilarious. You know what I mean? Like, I want to say who thinks like that, but you know, there's people out there. And I just love some of the animation in this and the actual pictures really makes it hilarious and just fun to read. Like it wouldn't be quite the same as a novel written out without the pictures. And just like, he's trying to shake her off. He's like, how do I get this kid off of me, right? He's so funny because he is trying to figure out like, how do I understand what a kid is saying and thinking? And how do I be a dad? How do I be the perfect dad for this mission? That's, that's the mission I need to be a good dad, right? It's like random hair sticking up. To think that all the world's parents are understanding such a difficult mission. It's like, yeah, I wish. I think Anya is about like six years old. So she's like just like the youngest that he could get. And then this guy, he is Frankie. It's his job to do like the intel. He gets the intel on the people and he also gets like any information, like intel, like I said, that they need. And he's hilarious. I like him. I want to call him Floyd. His name is Lloyd Forger. And he's trying to keep her inside the house. Like she wants to go with him and he's like, no, I can't take you with me. And like these kind of animations, these kind of drawings or whatever, is just what makes me laugh so much. And so he literally barricades her into the apartment. He's like, and that's why you're late? In the end, I had to trap her inside by barricading the front door. And uh, I just cannot fathom the way children think. Crying is their solution to everything. It is utterly infuriating. And Frankie says their kids, Twilight, crying is their job. And as I was reading this, panel here i was on gavin's like reading sprints and i was like i totally feel lloyd in this moment right now because my baby is driving me crazy and he's been crying all day and he's literally been sitting in my lap for the past like week not letting me go not letting me do anything he just needs to be in my lap 24 7 and it's exhausting and it's tiring and i'm like just stop touching me please for five minutes 
Anyways, I'm feeling Lloyd as he's becoming a father for the first time, especially to a bit of an older child. But even if you've brought home a baby, I mean, they're gonna cry all the time too, right? But I'm, I'm totally feeling this book right now. Then he also has to get a wife to go to this interview. The school is very much like about family and va family values and stuff. Or on the couch. He falls asleep and she like curls up with him and cuddles him and then he wakes up and is like scared and like knocks her off the couch. But he needs to get a mother so they're like how am I gonna find this wife? Just this random woman who's gonna like want to marry me and be in this sham marriage and stuff. So this has like fake dating forced marriage situation and like Frankie's like I'll be the mother and Anna is I don't want this mama which I thought was hilarious. Anyways there's your now she's the face of book number three so this is Anna and she's face number two the face of the book number two and then three and your is 27 and still single and she works at the like a government job but she's actually city hall clerk and they're horrible like the people the women that she works with are like there is something wrong with you you are 27 years old and you're still single like what is wrong with you you're not normal this is not right and so that's her reason for wanting to get married and agree to this and her brother is super protective of her younger brother their parents died or whatever and she raised him and he is actually working for the secret police and she doesn't know that and she's secretly assassin no one knows that and he at the end of book two going into book three they actually meet her brother Yuri is like I need to meet this husband of yours that you've had for a year because they fake that it's been a year and you never told me about him kind of thing and that whole interaction between them is hilarious he's very very suspicious of Lloyd and is like I don't know if you guys are actually dating or not and he's like and what do you call him your Lloydy? Loy Loy? It is, isn't it? Loy Loy. Damn it, Yuri. Or your. And I just, I don't know why that made me laugh. It just did. That's where I am in book three. Book two is about her getting into the academy and all the hurdles they have to go through to get through like the first interview and stuff like that. And is she gonna make it? Is she not gonna make it? How she interacts with the guy's son that she has to become friends with in order for this mission to succeed and of course Anna can read the minds right so she knows that her dad Lloyd wants her to become friends with Damien and she has to become friends and has to apologize she punches Damien in the face day one she gets a demerit but she needs to get these like Stella star things to become like the best of the best the elite to get into like the private club at the school and stuff and she needs eight of those to get in or eight demerits would get you expelled and she got one on Orient orientation day it wasn't even the first day of school just orientation because she punched Damien in the face because he's a big fat bully and she saw her mom your punch like beat up somebody that was like trying to kidnap her because she's got the uniform at the school so they're like this person's obviously rich so they kidnap they try to kidnap her outside the grocery store and your is like that's my daughter and just like beats the crap out of these guys and she's like mommy teach me how to do that so they're like at home like t learning how to box and stuff it was really cute and sweet and she's like I want to be big and strong and tough like mommy so yeah she couldn't handle her emotions in front of Damien and just socks him in the face like he deserved <laughs> even though we all teach our kids like walk away from the bully be nice to the bully get a help from a teacher whatever but really we're all like yeah good he deserved being punched in the face honestly <laughs> yeah that's how that's going and then I'm just like I said just started number three so they met with the brother and convinced him that their marriage is real and legit now they are on to mission 14. 13 was to get the brother on board and I don't know what's happening now. It's been a while since I read it but I'm really enjoying the rereads. I am excited to get into the fifth one will be a new one for me so I'm excited to get into those. Hopefully soon I'll try and finish this one tonight and then dive into four and five tomorrow and I will update and let you know how it's going, how I'm feeling. Am I regretting it? Maybe a little bit but it'll be good and fun and hopefully I will find some time to get all the editing done. I have a lot of editing I need to do so I need to buckle down and make a plan for reading and editing and that's about it. That's how my week's gonna go. Let me know do you read manga? Have you read Spy Family? And I will update when I've read more.
So I am on Spy Family number four. I haven't started it yet. This is the last of my rereads and then five will be all new to me. So that is exciting. Anya got a Stella star thing for saving a kid that was drowning in the pool when they went to go do some volunteer work at the hospital. And Anya and Lloyd basically got kicked out of volunteering because Anya was just like running around being crazy being a typical six-year-old child and she ended up saving this boy drowning and for that act of heroism she got the Stella star and then her friend Becky from school yes. was talking about what are you gonna get as a prize for doing such a good job so Anya decides she wants to get a dog this dog also has some special abilities so that's kind of exciting he is adorable he kind of looks like a walrus or a giant seal or something. This one's a really fun one as well. I know how they end up getting the dog and stuff. So I'm excited to jump into this. Katie is just doing some reading sprints right now. So it's perfect. I will read this for a little bit and then go on to do a little bit more editing. I've been editing my Spy Family vlog. Hopefully get this out at a reasonable time. And I'm enjoying my read so far. And I will update when I have more to say. So I am two thirds of the way through Spy Family number four. And the funny thing, the whole entertainment thing about this manga is the fact that one is a spy, one is an assassin, and the child is a telepath. And none of them know about the other one, right? So, well, the daughter, Anna, knows all the secrets because she's a telepath. But it's the scenarios that they get caught up in and the excuses they have to come up with to hide their identities. So in this case, they decide to get a dog for Anna as a reward for doing well and saving a person's life. And I mean, saving a person's life is pretty incredible, of course, that would deserve a pretty big reward. But it's kind of funny that they're just like, yeah, I'll get you a dog. I'm like, I wish. Like, where's my dog? <laughs> and... Lloyd is seeing this as an opportunity to get some kind of like guard dog for them and he's like I'll contact the agency and find some kind of good dog that will work for that and they're kind of funny one of them has like a six pack like it's just a beef of a dog it's like these dogs that they come up with I was like that's hilarious but she wants a little dog or whatever and they're like well there's an adoption fair going on just down the street why don't you go there and there's like hundreds and hundreds of these dogs and then where these dogs have come from like this one and there's a couple other ones is there are these terrorists that are gonna use dogs to strap bombs onto them and then kill like this one president or somebody high up in government or something like that and I don't keep track of like the politics I'm just here for the funny wacky scenarios and this dog actually has kind of a superpower and it can see the future a little bit and these dogs were like some kind of government experiment that went wrong or didn't work out the way it was meant to or whatever so they're supposed to destroy these dogs and then some of them weren't destroyed and then these terrorist people got these dogs and we're going to use them blah 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 oh the scenario is they're at the pet shop that lloyd has asked the agency to set up for the dogs that he wants to show off that would be like good guard dogs and then he gets called for like a side operation kind of thing they're like we need you in right now the spy agency that he works for is super like desperate for people right now they're short-staffed basically so he gets called aside and he's like i really need to go to the bathroom is his excuse right so he's like you just go on ahead of me to the adoption fair and i will meet you there Sorry, but I'm having some bowel issues right now. Why don't you two go on ahead? The shelter's right by the station. Yor is like, Lloyd, are you okay? We'll just wait here for you. Papa takes a real long time to crap, so we should go. Oh, I see. I guess that's fine then. And then Lloyd is thinking to himself, I appreciate her backing my play, but uh, watch your language, young lady. So I just thought that was a funny little scene. But all of this stuff, so from that scene where he's like, I'm going to go to the bathroom, all of this happens... All of that stuff happens and she gets kidnapped. Anna gets kidnapped or taken or something. And then I can't, I, ju I literally just read this and I can't remember what is happening right now. But she ends up at this terrorist place with these dogs. And this dog saw like a vision of Anna and her family and was like, that's my people kind of thing. And Anna gets caught up with these terrorists. Yor goes looking for her and she gets in this fake fight and has to fight a couple of terrorists. All of this stuff is happening. And they're like, man, Lloyd is just in the bathroom the whole time. And at the end here, he's just like, 
I'm so sorry that I was holed up in a restroom while all this was happening. And she, you're as known as being a really bad cook. And she's like, it must have been the terrible breakfast I made that put you there. So it just kind of like makes me laugh the scenarios that they have to come up with. And of course, a bathroom scenario was going to come up in one of these. Anyways, my kids are back now. So I'm going to go. I'm still enjoying my reread. And your mini eggs. And I will check in with the next book. I'm just flipping open Spy Family number five and starting to read. I was talking about in my last clip that they have to keep coming up with excuses like why they keep disappearing kind of thing. And Lloyd said that he was going to go to the bathroom and she believes it's because of the breakfast that she made she can't cook at all like she's really bad at, she's like this terrible housewife kind of thing or everyone makes her seem like a bad housewife your is like i need to learn how to cook my husband spent an entire day on the toilet because of a breakfast i made i just want to point out like this lady like all these three ladies are horrible human beings and just like so mean and bullies to especially your for being single and stuff and like she's yelling at her for squishing the tomatoes like look at that face and then she's like, this is all your fault. Look at that face. And then she, he's like, she's a great cook. She can teach you. And she's like, you did not just say that. But like, look at that face. They're so mean to her. And poor Yor, like, she just feels like she's the worst housewife ever. And it's going to, like, end her marriage. And she talks about, this could cost me my marriage, which would endanger my real job. So, like, it's important for her to keep up this sham marriage and stuff like that and she just is constantly beating herself up for being a terrible cook and housewife kind of thing so it's kind of sad actually really they're quite mean to her for sure so i've been terrible but i've been terrible about updating because it is the kids have nine days of school nine of them is it spring break you ask no it's not it's teacher's convention pull over for a second it's been good because I don't have to get up and get up early, first of all. Second of all, it's good because I've been having the back pain. I injured my back, which I talk about in the Blackothon, this whole like dramatic saga at the hospital of me cracking my rib. Now, for the past week and a half, I have been able to move and function, but it still hurts for me to pick up the baby, bend down, pick stuff up off the ground. I can do it, but it does hurt, and I have- I just- <laughs> I'm trying to be careful with how much I do and not injure myself worse. So having the kids around to help me with that is great. Let's take you out of the steering wheel thing here. Peaches, look at you so pretty in the sun. My other thing that's happening is, if you notice my hair, I am having some issues with this hair. Obviously I'm trying to bleach it and I want it like this bright bleach color, but I had red in it previously that I just dyed it all really dark. And am I having like a midlife crisis? I hope not because that would mean I'd only live to be like 72. I wanna live longer than that. But am I having some kind of like I'm aging crisis and trying to cover up gray hair? No, not at all, of course not. We're here to talk about Spy Family. I am on number six. I was hoping to finish this vlog and have it go up February 29th. Today is February 28th. Gosh, it takes me forever to edit. Just me sitting here talking to you, like it just takes me forever to edit, but that's also because of this beautiful doggy. Cause she's constantly getting up and getting into trouble. It's because of the baby sleeping in the background who's constantly in trouble or on my lap. So I'm like trying to edit and he's just like hitting buttons. So that's great. And he does still nap during the day, but usually at that point I'm just like super frustrated. Anyways, let's update Spy Family. So I know I talked a little bit about Spy Family 5 and you're learning how to cook. Got a little post-it note to write down what I want to talk about because my memory is completely shot. Let me tell you something. I can't remember a single book I've read this year. That's how that's going. Anyways, Yor is learning how to cook. She's terrible at it. And it's hilarious because her brother comes to try the food and he's like literally putting it in his mouth. And he's like, this is the best food ever, Yor. And he's just violently projectile vomiting everywhere while praising how good her food is because he is obsessed with Yor, his sister, his 
sister biological sister who raised him like a mother. I don't read manga. I don't consume a lot of Japanese media, mangas, animes, or anything like that. I don't know how normal it is for brothers and sisters to be quite that into each other. Oh, I thought I heard you. Oh, hey, great, you're up. Um, Rachel, this is my sister Krista. Krista, this is Rachel. Hi, nice to meet you. I wish you told me we were having company. I'd have fixed myself up. Like it would help. You are so bad. You are. You are. You are. You are. You are. Uh, you are. You are so dead. <laughs> I'm gonna get you. <laughs> it, it's weird and it's creepy. And I'm like, just back off. Yuri, just calm down. That's your sister. I like that you're protective of her and you want her to be in a good marriage. And you know, if her husband hurts her kind of thing, like I'm gonna kick your ass. I love that. We love a protective brother, but he's a little much. He's a little much. Yeah, her food is like deadly. Here you go. He says it's fantastic. I don't know if I showed this already, but this is him eating and just vomiting and saying like, it's fantastic. So we haven't gotten back to that so far. That's her brother on the front here. The story has him in it a little bit more, but we also talk about Damien, who is the kid that Anna has to become friends with and try and like infiltrate his circle kind of thing. Cause that's the whole point of this operation. And he's just a big fat mean bully. But in this, we get a little bit more story, just a little bit, not a lot, but you can really see that Damien is neglected at home and he just wants his father's approval, but his father's never even around. And he is just like talking to the butler. Like he calls home to talk to the butler and is like, did dad see what happened to me on orientation day when I got punched in the face? And it's like, oh yeah, your dad was very concerned about that. And Damien's like, yeah, no, he didn't even notice I was injured or whatever. So there's a little bit more depth there and you can see that Damien's not just a bully for the sake of being the bully in the book. He actually has a little bit of a story and how he's been hurt and neglected at home, at least not physically neglected. His family is like super rich and powerful and stuff and he has everything he could ever need, but he doesn't have the attention, but he doesn't have the attention or affections of his father. So I liked that we did get a little bit more of a background. The characters aren't quite so one dimensional. I want yours close. I just love her style and her main sweater shirt thing that she wears. That's like the go-to thing to draw her in. I want to like crochet one for myself. You can see where she's making the tea. It's like this long sleeve, really long. It's actually kind of open in the back. It like ties up at the very top at the neck and then it's kind of sits open, but it's pretty long down like past your hips kind of thing. That's not the best picture of it there, but that's like the main thing she wears. And I love that. In number five, we also see Anna has to do a project for school where she has to pick like a career she wants to do and then like shadow that person and ask them questions and do like an essay on it. So she picks her dad, Lloyd, and he is a psychiatrist at the hospital. So she goes there and discovers like, cause she can read his mind. He's like, don't touch that bookshelf. And in his mind, he's like, that's where my secret layer is kind of thing. So of course he has to go deal with something where he's getting a new assignment. And she's like, this is my chance to go check it out. And like goes and wanders off and checks it out and stuff. But she's very much a typical child. <laughs> and we are introduced to another character in this that is another spy. I think Lloyd mentored her and she is absolutely head over heels in love with Lloyd and she thinks that she should be his secret wife for the mission because she'd be better at it because she'd just be better at the wife duties plus she's a spy and an agent so she'd be better at that stuff as well and she knows about the mission where Yor doesn't. She's just there as a cover-up story but she doesn't know about the mission obviously. So her name is Fiona. Yeah, she wants to destroy your, get rid of her, and get them split up and move in on Lloyd. And her reasoning is that it's good for the mission, but also he will see how great of a human being she is and a great wife and fall in love with her and live together happily ever after. So we got more characters added. And yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about in this. Yuri's weird obsessive relationship with his sister is what I wrote. And yours bad cooking is just hilarious. And then I moved on to number six, 
which you can see Fiona is actually the cover of this. At the very beginning of this book, Fiona and Lloyd are doing another mission, kind of a side mission, because they're like, this person has some secret files, he's retired. This guy collects art, and he has a tennis competition, and whoever wins the competition can go pick something out of his private art collection. And the picture that they need for the mission has like a secret code on it because the guy who had that painting has some kind of secrets or whatever and he's like this will keep war from happening kind of thing so the spy agency's like we need to get our hands on that piece of paper so like this much of the beginning is them doing this tennis competition there are some funny moments and stuff that happen in it but it it is a lot and then again fiona wants to take over and be the wife so when they get back home fiona's driving them and then they see that your and anna and the dog are out at the park across the street from the apartment and are just practicing tennis and then fiona's like hey your i will challenge you to a match and fiona's figuring that she will win Lloyd's heart this way or whatever, right? And it's not that Yor is good at tennis, but she's good at being an assassin. So she goes to like hit the tennis ball with the racket and she hits it so hard that the strings on the racket just slice through the tennis ball and destroy the ball completely. So she's like, I need to figure out how to not hit the ball so hard. But she's good at like the martial art movement stuff of being an assassin. So she ends up being good at the tennis and beats Fiona and Fiona's like destroyed and has to go to the woods to practice her tennis game. So I don't know but it's a lot of tennis in this. There was a dodgeball scene in one of the books number two or three and it was funny again they the author here Tatsuya Endo does a fine job showing the sports. It's just a lot of tennis that's all and it went on a little bit long but that's fine. I'm still enjoying the story. Anyways I totally just lost what I was saying. The scenes are fine with the sports in it. It was just a lot. That's all. And now I'm at the scene where Anna is still trying to get to be friends with Damien. And her friend Becky believes that Anna is in love with Damien. Anna really loves cartoons about spies and adventure and stuff. And Becky is obsessed with love stories and more of the like soap opera kind of stuff. So she's like, I know how to get Damien to notice you and fall in love with you and stuff. And so they're going on a shopping trip and they're buying clothes. I haven't read this page yet, but you can see like the different clothes they're trying on and stuff like that. We'll see where that goes. I don't like or dislike the Becky character. She's fine. She's not like annoying or mean or anything like that. Like it's fine. So yeah, that's where we're at. I'm going to go pick up my other kids. They're at their friend's house and we're going to go home and clean our house and get ready for we're going on a trip tomorrow for just like a three day trip south to Edmonton. So excited about that. I'm going to keep reading as much as I can. Peaches, we're gonna go for a drive now. Peaches, we'll see you later. So it's very noisy and echoey in here and it's a public pool at the hotel so somebody could walk in at any moment but right now it's quiet with my daughter just playing in the pool and I just 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 finished number seven it's very hot in here it feels like a sauna like I'm sweating so bad but this one was really really fun they are on a cruise ship now at the very end of this Anna wins a trip for two and it's on the same cruise ship that your just got a job on not a job like on the cruise ship but her job has, is taking her on a cruise ship she's an assassin but in this case she has to protect somebody she's gotta be someone's bodyguard so that's kind of interesting so we'll see what happens there i'm excited to go on further with them being on the cruise ship that should be really fun i have number eight with me we head home tomorrow morning i don't know if i just want to jump straight into number eight or start going to cry we'll see I am desperately trying to get books read and videos filmed at the very least and it's very very difficult with certain people in my life to get things done. So somebody likes to come in and make lots of trouble the minute I hit record or sit down to read and then the dog is a whole other 
It's June. Just gonna get dog hair all in my coffee. I had the coffee on the table. The baby was climbing on the table and dunking his fingers in my coffee. Cheers. When I first picked up Spy Family Volume 1, my daughter was 10 and a half, 11 years old or so. And she asked if she could read it. And I said, no, it is rated teen. And it even says T plus on the back and older teen there. Leave my coffee alone. A lot of people do consider animated stuff to be Mommy, for kids. And I think it's the same with manga. A lot of people who tell you about Spy Family is like, oh, it's really cute and sweet and fun, but it's not for kids. It is adult. And that was really brought home for me in volume eight, especially there's a big scene in it with lots of blood and killing and death and bullet holes in the head and stuff. Sorry, my baby stopped my recording. I'm just throwing my books around and stuff. But it's not a really grotesque drawing style. It's also in black and white, so that helps. It doesn't feel very gory. And I know there are manga like horror authors out there like Jinji Ito that can make it very gory and gross and disgusting, but that is not Tatsuya Endo. But just as like an example, there there's this big epic fight. At the end of volume eight, Yor is protecting this like old mob boss's wife. The mob boss was killed or something like that. And then there's a big hit out on the wife and baby. And Yor's job is to be the bodyguard and protect her so that she can get to safety. What is with the lighting? Can we just get one thing to work right for my video? There's like 10 plus hit men on this ship trying to kill this lady that Yor is trying to protect. Trying to figure out the lighting. Why is the lighting so crappy? So there's like this huge scene at the end and it gets pretty intense. Like this guy's got like a gun in his mouth kind of thing. Explosions. There's fireworks happening like at the same time. That's what's covering up the sound of what's happening. So convenient. She's like covered in blood and stuff. I feel like as the mom, I need to warn you like this is for older teens. This is not for kids, even though it looks cute and fun. Like, she's an assassin, and she does assassin jobs on page. I don't think I talked much about Volume 8. This is where they are actively, like, on the ship. I think it was at the end of 7 that they were getting onto the ship, and... Your's job is to get this woman to safety and they're going by ship on this cruise and then, sorry for the baby noises, Anna wins two tickets to go on this cruise. So her and Lloyd get to go on the cruise on this vacation during like spring break at school kind of thing. So that's how they all end up on the ship together. What I'm liking about the Spy Family manga series is that it takes place in a lot of different places, but it has its main settings. I, Hi. the lighting here is not working out for me. And I like this background because you get to see part of my beautiful pink bookshelf. There's like the main setting of the apartment where they all live together, their home and the school. And once in a while you see you're at her job at City Hall, but there's enough happening and going on that it's exciting. They're on a ship. Sometimes they're on a boat in the city. There's one part where Anna's going shopping at the mall with her friend Becky. Things like that, right? Like there's enough scenes and stuff, enough locations that it's interesting and fun and keeps it new and fresh kind of thing. So I'm enjoying that. The ship was really fun. Anna, of course, is really, really excited about going on the ship. And she's just like, we need to do an adventure, adventure, adventure. They believe that Yor is doing this big job and trying to like wow a client or whatever. Not a client, but just something to do with City Hall is what they believe. So she's like, I'm not really going to be able to spend any time with you. So they're separated. But Anna, as the telepath, knows that there's like bad guys on the ship. She knows that Yor is there to do a different kind of job. That has nothing to do with City Hall work. And so Anna is like, well, dad can't find out about mom because then they'll break up. And in her visions, not her visions, but in her mind, like in her imagination, you have to remember she's like six. So every time she thinks that Lloyd and you are going to break up, mom and dad are going to break up, she immediately thinks, and we're going to abandon Anna because Anna's adoptive, right? And Anna knows that she's just part of Lloyd's like cover story. So... She always wants to keep them together. And she figures that if Lloyd finds out that Yor is an assassin, they're gonna split up. So she's like, I need to protect mom and not let dad find out that mom is an assassin. So Anna has to find ways to distract Lloyd from finding out about Yor's actual job while they're all on the ship together. 
Lloyd's directive in this, his mission in this, is to have a good family time because his main job is to yeah. infiltrate the school and not the school but get close to Desmond, Damien Desmond's dad, and no Jesper. <laughs> I can see him jumping in my glasses in the river. <laughs> so Lloyd's cover family, like that's his mission right now. So his handler is like. So your angle's probably moving like so much. Lloyd's handler is like, your mission is to have fun and relax on this trip and just be a dad and be the family man. So Anna is constantly being like, dad, you need to be having fun. Deb, if you were really having fun, you need to try on all these clothes. And then Lloyd in his mind is trying to figure out how to please Anna and be a good dad and all this stuff. And of course, Anna's reading his mind. And so she's trying to like keep him busy and all the antics that go into that and they're shopping on the ship and she's like dad if you really wanted to have fun you would dress the part so he comes out wearing like absolutely everything that the sales lady is trying to get him to wear so there's some serious moments in the book her assassin job and fighting and stuff but there's also like funny light-hearted moments as well it's kind of interesting because yor became an assassin to take care of her brother when they were kids because their parents died and she needed a way to make money and somehow she became this assassin so i don't know how a child like a teenager gets a job like that but that's how it started and now she has a job at city hall as her cover but i assume she like gets paid a wage for that and stuff like she's a legit employee of city hall and now she's like married to lloyd and has this family and stuff but wow. she's considering now that she has to be the mom to anna and everything like that like this job is very dangerous to be an assassin right and she's kind of going through a moment in here like do i still need to do this job my brother's grown up now he has his own job he is like 20 years old he doesn't need me to take care of him anymore so maybe i should get out of this business maybe this job of protecting this lady will be my last job as an assassin working for it's called like the garden and it's kind of interesting that she's going through a moment of reflection in her life and seeing if this is something she needs to do or not if this is still the right career move for her just questioning her career choices and how to move forward from here and she does talk about the way she justifies killing these people is that she's taking out the garbage basically she's cleaning up the city she's doing this to protect because one of the reasons why she got into this job wasn't just to make money but also to protect her brother and leave a world for him that was safe for him to grow up in a place that she wanted him to live in right like a safe country free of these bad people basically and yuri her brother grew up to become a secret service policeman secret police and it's kind of funny because like they don't know about each other's jobs and if he knew about her kind of thing like he'd have to arrest her and so there's all these secrets going around right and his thing is like the same thing right like i'm cleaning up the streets that's lloyd's thing as well being like i'm cleaning up the streets i'm keeping things safe lloyd is trying to get peace between east and west so they're all fighting for a bigger cause just beyond themselves right that's their motivation so it's kind of interesting just to see your going through this and deciding like is this still what i want what are my motives for doing this etc there is growth and development in the characters in this and it's not just light and fluffy and there is development and depth to these characters i'm really enjoying that as well that was book eight and i love frankie he gathers intelligence and information and stuff for lloyd and his organization so he's a really fun character as well he's funny So then we move on to book nine and I found this bookmark Etsy page, Backdoor Prints on Facebook Marketplace and this person actually has a business here in Fort McMurray so that was exciting and I bought this beautiful little bookmark. So moving on to book nine, there's also a little recap. When you're reading it, like binge reading the whole series, you don't need it. But there is like the story so far and stuff and the, our main characters and the mission, the target, why we're doing all this. So if you read one of these mangas every month, 
every couple months. You don't have to go back and reread the manga before to get back that information. Everything you need is like right here. Even if say you read the first three back to back and then you had like a six month break and wanted to pick up number four, you could just go into books one, two, and three and just read this and you'd be good and caught up. So I think that's really awesome. And even just this little bit of text here, you have the whole story that you need to not have to go back and reread the books. Number nine starts back on the ship. They're on it for a while. Number eight kind of ends on a cliffhanger. So you want to pick up number nine for sure. They have a day off the ship just at one of their stops and they do absolutely everything together as a family. She gets a break from her city job to go and spend time with the family. They're like riding like a tandem bike thing. They go scuba diving, all this fun stuff. So this much of the book, they're still on the ship and then they get off the ship and go back to school and talking about this is what we did on our vacation kind of thing. And then the dog helped in volume seven, I think it is, Bond helped Lloyd with one of his projects so that Bond wouldn't have to eat yours food and die. So Lloyd has decided to train the dog for catching bad guys and stuff. So not just as a guard dog, but for like actively catching bad guys while he's out. And then there's a fire that happens. And again, the dog, remember, the dog has precognition or whatever. He can like get little glimpses of the future. I can't let my dog out. Speaking of dogs, the dog can see parts of the future, right? Like little glimpses. And there's a fire happening at the street and they go in and they rescue this little doggy from the fire. And then when they get out of the fire, Lloyd is like, oh no, Bond, you're on fire. There's a little bit of fire like on him. So he's like, let me get water. And then he splashes him with water. And if you don't read the book, if you don't care about dogs, if none of this is interesting to you, you don't care about any of this. And it's not funny or cute or whatever, but this is Bond. He's a pretty big, he's based off of a Pernese dog. So they're big and fluffy and then he gets them wet. The wet Bond made me laugh out loud. <laughs> the poor dog and he normally barks it's like wharf w-o-r-f every time he barks it's wharf that's his little bark sound so now he's all wet the little pug that he saved down there so cute this is what happens when you get wet yours the one who baths him so i've never seen him like this before oh poor dog that's so funny well when he's wet he barks borf I noticed that as I was reading it and I'm like his bark changed but whatever and then at the end of it they're walking back home together and he's you know borf 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 and Lloyd I just don't get why your bark changes when you're wet so I thought that was funny I'm sitting here telling you all of this stuff about the book and I'm like this is so stupid you don't care about this but I guess if you didn't care, you wouldn't have clicked on and watched this far because we're pretty far into the vlog by now. And I don't know who's even watching this, who's out there, who knows, maybe this is just for me to remember in the future all the books I've read because I can't remember anything and my brain just doesn't work. So this is just for my own records, I guess. Yeah, every time I'm just like chuckling to myself and reading this stuff, I'm like, nobody cares about this. Nobody. Anyways, I talked about at the school how there are Stella stars and tauntress strikes or whatever and they're like lightning bolts and there's this crazy lady who goes around like touching you on the forehead and giving you a bolt and a tauntress strike and just taking out everyone she's like you coughed and you didn't cover your mouth strike oh you didn't have an extra handkerchief or you didn't have your handkerchief with you strike so she's like crazy disciplinarian and that's basically how this one ends is with Anna getting another one because she helped Damien not get one. She ended up getting one because she knows plan B is to become friends with Damien. So she wanted to keep him from getting expelled and become his friend, right? Yeah, that's how that one ended. And now I'm moving on to number 10. So I'm excited to be getting through these. It is now almost 11, 10, 50. So things are moving a little bit slow, but my reading isn't slow. It's me chasing the kid and the dog around. So let's move on to number 10. Is that the right one? Number 10. I don't know who this is. I think it's Lloyd. It says on the back here, future spy. Maybe we're going to learn about Lloyd, Mr. Twilight's past. Let's jump in.
I'm just at the very beginning of book 10 here. And it is the story of Twilight or Lloyd as a kid growing up, I guess. I don't know how far it's going to go. I literally just started. But I just wanted to point out that Lloyd as a baby or as a child is in the middle of a war-torn country. There wasn't supposed to be a war. All the adults are like, there's no war, there's no war. And then this bomb goes off like right in front of him. And it's really reminding me of all the things that are happening in the East right now between Palestine and Israel and it's just it's horrible I'm gonna share in the description box below check for some Instagram people to follow for Palestine and ways you can help support there's lots of wars there's lots of tragedy there's lots going on in the world right now and I can't keep up with all of it I can't keep up with like every injustice that's happening. You know, do your research and stuff, but along with the big things in the news right now that are happening and with what's happening in this book, I'm gonna be sharing some links in the description box below and where you can go to learn about the war in the Middle East and how you can support them, what you can do. And yeah, that's all I wanted to mention. So I guess trigger warnings for war and bombs and stuff like that in this book. So I just finished volume 10. And at the very end, sometimes there's these little short missions, they're called. This one was just Anna watching her favorite spy show, Bond Man. And the second short mission, short mission number eight in total, Frankie takes Bond to the dog park and they run into this beautiful dog, walked by this beautiful girl. And she's like, I come to this dog park every week. And he's trying to set up a date, like all his romantic interests and attempts and stuff completely fail, of course. But they decide to set up a date without asking the women, of course. And the dog is like on a date. It doesn't go well, but it's cute that Frankie's giving Bond like dating advice. And then Bond is like actually taking that and trying to do that. So that was cute. This volume started with the war when Lloyd was a kid and we kind of see a little bit of his origin story and how he got to where he is today. That was just the very beginning, this part here. And then a little bit about some like conflict between East and West and propaganda and stuff like that here. And then Anna's in school talking to the headmaster about becoming an imperial scholar and what that takes and everything like that and just trying hard in school kind of thing. And Yor goes out to find some cakes and stuff like that that Anna wants. She's going grocery shopping and runs into this girl, rescues her, catches all her stuff that's falling. There is a scene of them playing volleyball, not super long, so that was good. The sports is always kind of funny because it's so dramatic and... Even though Yor has never played sports like in her life, she's really good at it because she's so powerful and strong. It's a really short part of the chapter, so I liked it. It was fun. And then she's having a conversation with these women. They are all mothers and it's like a mother's league kind of thing. And then you find out she's actually the wife of Desmond, Donovan Desmond, Damien's mom. And now there's another way to get close to the Desmond family for Lloyd's mission. So ooh, that's exciting. Things are amping up a little bit here. And that was basically it. So at the end here, Anna is now feels like she is in competition with Yor to become friends with one of the Desmonds because Anna feels like if Yor becomes friends with the mom and gets more contact and stuff like that, and it's more helpful to the mission, then they'll just put Anna to the side. So she's trying to get in good with Desmond again and it's always failing and she ends up throwing a burger on his head. So Yor and Melinda is the name of the mom. Yor and Melinda friendship level plus 10. Anna and Damien friendship level minus 100. So that's how that's going. But this was a really fun 10 volumes and I'm glad I read through it and it read very quickly for me anyways how quickly I do it. Gavin went ahead and read up to volume 13 which isn't released yet. He's reading them on the Shonen Jump app which I am not going to do. I am not going to cheat and read them online. Not really cheating but I'm not paying for the Shonen app because I don't read enough manga for that. But I have ordered volume 11 and excited about that. He's right up to volume 13, so that's not fair. This vlog is gonna end with 10, and then I think I'm gonna read the short stories first. We'll see how I'm feeling. I'm gonna take a break for now, listen to some Emily Wilde while I prepare some supper before I go pick up the kids from school, and see if I read the short stories or not, and wrap up this vlog.
going through Family Portrait now. I've read the first two missions. There's four missions and then a short story. So I don't know what the difference between the mission is and the short story is. I think the short story is like two or three pages, but we'll see what happens. This is original concept by the author of Bi Family, Tatsuya Endo. But the novel is by Aya Yajima. I'm not sure, but it's not Tatsuya doing the actual novel, I guess. It sounds like she's ad adapted a few novels. I assume it's a girl name. I don't know. Okay, translation is by somebody else. Casey Lowy? Low? Casey? So this Aya, Aya, Aya person has done the Spy Family Portrait family portrait light novel thing here, the short stories. It is a little bit different than reading the graphic novel or the manga, obviously, because they have to describe everything instead of just showing you a picture of it. You could read this without having read the Spy Family manga because it does explain a little bit about what's going on and who's who. But I don't know. I think I prefer the manga more. I don't know if this is really adding anything to it so far. The first one was a camping trip that the Eden Academy kids went on from first grade. And I'm trying to decide, even in the manga, if Anna and her classmates act like six-year-olds or not. If they act a little bit older than six-year-olds that I'm accustomed to. This lighting sucks. I don't know. They just seem a little mature. That's fine. The camping trip was fine. They get lost. Anna is trying to become friends with Damien, as always. And she takes a right instead of a left and gets lost. And they end up like in a thunderstorm and have to hide out in a cave. And then the headmaster has to come and find them. He's upset that they got lost, but also kind of like, well, it's also my fault for not having people along the path to make sure that you got to the right place because they went to go fetch water. And then it kind of just ends. They get picked up from the cave. And then it's like Anna's back home and telling Lloyd and Yor about her trip. And that's it. And it just kind of ended. It was kind of random. The second story is from the perspective of Yuri, Yor's brother. It's really weird to read from his perspective because like he does have this really, really weird obsession with Yor. And she needs a babysitter. So Lloyd is at work. It's a holiday. Yuri happens to have the day off. And he thinks he's going to go spend the whole day with Yor, but she's like, actually, I need you to babysit Anna for me. The one cool thing is in here is he takes her to this, like, uh, what's it called? Kids Market. Kid Street Workplace, it's called. And they basically have, like, a little town set up. And then the kids go and dress up as and play, act as doctors, lawyers policemen, firefighters, all different jobs or whatever. And they get to experience it and kind of decide what kind of jobs they like and what they're good at and what they don't like kind of thing. And I thought that was really cool. I was like, I wish we had something like that here. That'd be fun to go like test out a bunch of different jobs and stuff. And it's for kids like on a six. You don't have to be like in high school doing a work placement or anything. Like this is just fun play stuff. So I thought that was kind of fun, but it is exhausting being in Yuri's head and how much he's absolutely in love with his own sister. It's weird. That one ended a little bit, it felt a little bit more complete that way. It didn't feel like it just ended randomly and we're like, where did the other half of the story go? In the first story, I wanted to see more of them camping. So far, that's it. I'm hopefully finished this today. I've got this much left, so halfway through and it's reading fairly quickly. And uh, right now, I'm just going to be doing some editing and then get back into this. Say bye! Hi. I am in the middle of this third story and this is like Frankie's story, his mission, I guess. And he's leaving the hospital after being injured doing something for Lloyd. Whenever I talk about Frankie and Lloyd at the same time, I want to call him Floyd. <laughs> That's their relationship name. But he's complaining about being injured or whatever. And then he hears this singing. He gets turned around because he's so busy like mumbling to himself. He gets turned around and he's kind of lost. And then he realizes he's in like some garden for like the patients at the hospital. And he hears this singing and he goes and he finds this girl sitting in the garden and she's singing. And she looks at him, but she's kind of looking like to the side or whatever, not looking directly at him. And he notices that she's actually blind. And he's attracted to her physically and like her. Her voice is the voice of an angel, of course. And he's interested in her, wants to date her kind of thing. She has to get this surgery done that should correct her eyesight. And she's nervous about it, of course. And is like, what if I don't wake up from the anesthetic and stuff? And Frankie's trying to reassure her of that and that she'll be okay. And then he's like, you're such a kind and sweet person. And she's like, no, I'm not. I've always been very shallow and thinking I'm better than everybody else. But now that I've like lost my sight, I see what truly is beautiful. And her dad's like super rich and stuff. And that's why she felt like 
she deserved all this stuff and she was above people, right? But she's kind of like growing and learning through the loss of her eyesight. And she's like, will you still be there for me? You're the only one who comes to visit me and I don't have any friends or anything like that because I lost them all through this. She had some kind of like disease or something that affected her eyesight and none of those people are there for her because they're not really friends of hers because she wasn't really a great person. So he's like, yeah, of course I'll be there for you. And then he goes to Lloyd, who is the master of disguise, the one of the like number one spies and is like, change my face. I want to look good. Give me like long black hair and blue eyes and all this stuff. He's like, I want to look good for her. And she said to him, like, I don't care what you look like, but she's attracted to his charm and his personality, I guess. So he wants to physically change how he looks. And Lloyd is just like, nope, that's a bad idea. I was just thinking like, it's so sad. Like Frankie, don't change the way you look. It's weird. I would say like his persona the way he's drawn and stuff he's not unattractive and lloyd is known as being like the attractive one and good looking and everything like that and he would be more the typical traditionally good looking guy sure but i've always found myself attracted to guys like frankie that are just like funny and goofy and that's just like my type i guess i don't know i find a wide range of guys attractive like their personal dress styles that i find attractive but also the way a guy looks i'm not just like tall dark and handsome kind of thing like I do find a wide range of people attractive but I've always been attracted to people like Frankie that are just like dorky and cute and can make me laugh so I'm just like don't change your face Frankie like that's not how you get a date and that's deceptive right so that's not a good way to start off a relationship either and that's just what I want to say about the third short story mission thing in this series I'm on page 107 and it goes to page 121 or something. So I have a little bit more to read. I don't know how it ends or if this turns out or not. I'll talk about that, I guess, with my next update. Yeah, just I understand wanting to look your best, but it's one thing to, you know, do your hair, have a shower, do your makeup, put on some nice clothes. Like it's a different thing to wear like a mask or have plastic surgery or something to change the way you look so that you'll be attractive for somebody. That's just my two cents. So I am here to finally, finally, finally wrap up my spy family vlog. At the beginning of the year, I started two vlogs and then I decided to add this vlog. And then in February, I decided to add the Blackathon vlog. So I've had like no content all year because I've just been doing vlog after vlog after vlog. So I've just wrapped up my Blackathon vlog, wrapping up my spy family vlog now. And I just have two more that are kind of on the go. Watch for the third vlog coming out March 19th. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I have just this week to work on it. All the content is just all going to come crashing in all at once. And I am a little bit overwhelmed by trying to do too much content. I need more sit down videos where I just do like tags or something easy. But I finished this the other day. They were fine. The short stories you can do without them, but they were fine. The second story was more about, did I talk about, I did, Frankie, not <laughs> Floyd. I talked about him and him wanting to change the way he looks and stuff. Though why he wanted to change the way he looked is explained in there about him deciding he can't be with this woman that seems to really like him. But that was kind of sad. Then the one after that was just like them at a picnic. The family, the forger family and the dog and this guy sees them and he's like, I'm a painter. I've lost my reason for painting. I have no muse. You guys are such a beautiful family. Can I please paint you? And they're like, yeah, sure. But, you know, his face can't be seen and her face can't be seen in a museum if it gets put up in a museum because they find out like he's actually a really famous artist, not just like some nobody. And there's like this whole thing. She's like trying to cover her face and stuff, but they can't say like why they don't want to be filmed or painted, all this stuff. So some crazy little antics come up. It was fine. It was fine. And then there's a little tiny short story at the very end. There's this beautiful little picture of them. This is not what he painted at all, but I just thought this was a cute little family portrait. And then there's just the short story at the very end, which is just two waitresses talking at a restaurant, obviously. And one of them just like broke up with her boyfriend or got dumped or something. And they're just kind of talking back and forth. And they're like, well, I saw this family was in the other day and they were really sweet and blah, blah, blah. I'm just talking about Lloyd and Anna and Yor. So it was cute. It was sweet. But I spent... $15 on this for this vlog and I don't know what to think about it. It was fine. Just consider it a part of the job. So I read 10 volumes of Spy Family and the short story collection. 
it was really fun. It was really cute. I'm so glad I got to jump back into this world and read all of these. And still haven't watched the manga yet, but hopefully this week, coming up, today is Sunday, hopefully this week my husband and I can jump in and watch some of the manga. We're supposed to watch it with a friend, but they're out of town right now, and he's got the country roll that has it on it, so... Anyways, this was really fun. If you see any explosions throughout the vlog, that is because Gavin told me I needed explosions in my vlog. If you had an hour long pause and lots of ums, that's the most important. Yeah, as, yeah, as long as you're like keeping the flow, just cutting out anything that really doesn't need to be there. You don't need to do all the zooms, the explosions or anything like that. I agree. That's that's pretty important, Becky. Note to self, add explosions. Yeah, yeah. So I've added some explosions, just so you know. If you read manga, if you've read Spy Family, let me know. Comment down below. Don't forget to give this vlog a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.